and welcome to this two-minute tutorial on using time ranges in the right hand explorer. These topics or topics we will cover are the right hand explorer explained in sections, default ranges, creating ranges, deleting ranges, comparing ranges, and some tips and tricks. All right, let's just jump into WK5 and cover this quickly. This is the right hand explorer. We see it here on the right hand of the screen, hence we named it that. The Explorer is sizable, so if you grab the edge of it and move it in or out, it will get smaller. When it's not arranged to the largest size, it has a hover over pop out, so it'll pop in and out. If you want to just have it fully open at all given times, which is something I actually do because I use the range a lot, just drag it as far to the right it will go, as it will go, and it's no longer hover over. The right hand Explorer is broken down into a range filter, a sport type selector, the actual range uh, ranges and some controls. All ranges basically is a way you can select between all ranges and user ranges. I'm going to build some ranges, ranges in a minute and we'll come back and take a look at that. You can also use that as a search box by typing in like 2012 and it will find your 2012 ranges. The next selection is pretty important. This is your sport type. With the uh, release of build 550 and 551, this has confused people again at times. Make sure that you have your all sport type selected if you want to see all data. But by deselecting a sport type, in this example, I'm going to deselect indoor, you'll notice the data has changed because it's no longer using any of my indoor bike data. So you also notice when I deselected um, indoor workouts, the all button deselected. If you want to select them all, you can just do it by selecting that All Files button, or I can deselect or combine certain ones in here, but it's very important that you have your sport type selections um, selected for the data that you want to see. Here we have a simple summary of date ranges. Um, you have the number of files or workouts sort of in each one, but you can see the activity here on the right, but not much in for other information in this kind of default setting. If I wanted to add a time range, I can simply click the plus button. It launches this little UI. I'm going to drag it over here and work on it in the time ranges. I'm going to call this time range just to show you as an example. You can always just edit typical dates, but let's just say I wanted to use like last 42 days. So I'm going to name that last 42 days. I'm going to make the from today minus 42. So you can actually use expressions in these boxes and that's how, or in these time ranges, that's how you make them work. And the two I'm just going to use to today. So it's basically a rolling 42 day. I can close that and you can see here I have last 42 days now in my selection. That's simply how you create a time range. Now let's just say I wanted to delete a time range. I would select the one I want to delete. I click minus and it's gone. That simple. All right, here's a tip and trick about customizing your right hand explorer. Here you have a little gear wheel. If you click the little down arrow, you have some options to add some key performance indicators or KPIs. I can show distance, duration, and work. Okay, I'm going to check that. Notice now I have last 45 days, I have 91 hours, 1400 miles, 4587 TSS. But you know what? I also want to understand the actual dates there. So I can select the actual dates. Now I actually have the dates for those ranges. This means all of your ranges are customizable. You can very simply just turn on the additional data KPI information or turn it off. I do both oddly enough. It depends on what time of year. Um, if I'm in my kind of winter foundation kind of phase, I really want to see dates and volumes. By the time I'm into race season and stuff like that, I tend to look at a nice clean view like that. Hope that helps.